they are going to throw the ball, that's for sure. And the things going to go in the air. Greg, were you involved in those discussions with mm-hmm. Nick Bosa and his family at all? Were you, were you surprised? Were you thrown off at all to have this news today? What's it do to your coach? No. You know, there's decisions that are made. Everyone has to make decisions that are uh, the best decision for them. And, uh, you know, I don't think that it's anything new. I've seen it happen. Nick's a, I love him. I love coaching him. Fantastic player, one of the best I've ever coached. He's gonna, he's gonna heal up. You've been in the NFL. What's kind of your advice to him now as he does make that little stuff? Well, he probably doesn't need my. I mean, he's got a brother who does that for a living, so <laughs> I'm sure he'll get plenty of advice. And dad that did it for a living, so. But I think. Greg, even if he had gotten cleared, let's say in November, stuff like his dad said today, it was still a 10 to 12 week window for surgery to maybe getting back into playing shape, which means he probably wouldn't have been available until you know December games, playoffs, and bowl and stuff. How do you think you guys have adjusted to him not being here? Well, you know, like I said earlier, in sports, you don't have a choice. Right? You just play with who you have. That's, uh, everybody has situations. Everyone's in a way to get those magical years where everybody stays healthy the whole time. Especially in our sport, it's not the rock and The common phrase, I guess, is next man up. We've got to go for but it's a reality in sports. The game's coming. Saturday night, Saturday night. Healthy, 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 healthy. And who's the line is strong enough depth wise to. To deal with it, right? I mean, you've had to. Well, you have to. I mean, but you lose a player of Nick's ability. You're not anyone else like him. So, I mean, that's again, that's that's the nature of the game. Competitive You guys have played some good the offenses so far this year. What do you see with Purdue? What they're doing? Well, they're, they they challenge you in many ways. They uh, schematically, they use a ton of different personnel groups. And schematically, they also do a lot of formations. They do a lot of uh, trick plays. They make you dot every I and cross every T. That's, that's the kind of outfit they are. So we're going to have to be at our very best Saturday night. The little number four, what stands out about him? The little number four, uh, Rondale Moore. Uh, very good player. Very quick. An incredible change of direction athlete. Um, he's been very productive for them. Productive and running the ball as well. How's your eye dotting and T crossing as a defense so far this year? Uh, you'd like it to be better, but I understand with some of the guys that have not played a lot that you know, you'd, you'd wish that you could give them experience in a pill. It doesn't work that way. The reason that uh, you get experience is you play through it. The thing that we as coaches have to do is make sure that we don't make the same mistakes twice, and we've done that a couple times. Uh, as long as they're making different mistakes, eventually you run out of the big ones. Greg, what's the challenge of defending those RPOs in the press man that you guys play? A couple of guys mentioned that after the game. There's a different challenge to that. Maybe. Well, uh, if you cover them, it's not a challenge. I mean, that's <laughs> that's what uh, you know, that's one way you take away the RPO part. It's a run pass option. So if they choose to throw it and you're covering them, then they don't have that option anymore. That's what makes it hard, though. I mean, the press part of it, press coverage in itself, is, a, is a, quite a challenge. What did, you, what kind of vibe did you get from your guys now on that side of the ball? Now that Nick made this call, you know, I'm not sure. Or was it? I'm not sure that was kind of. You know, they're they're on a journey. They're on a mission, and, and they're focused on what they have to do. I think um, I'm sure that it, you know, when they visit with him or they talk to him or talk yeah. to him via text that uh, it's an emotional thing, but they all came out and practiced hard. There's no memorial here today. <laughs> yeah. Greg, how do you think your linebackers, especially in that RPO game, are they ever getting sort of caught in between sometimes or not, not sure what they're supposed to do or how they can make a play? No, they're not perfect, but they've been pretty good. Um, We've committed to stopping the run with them. 
when the you know, the run part of it, and uh, if that's what their job is, they've been very dedicated. They've gone in there and done their job, uh, and that that to me is the key. If everybody can do their job, you know, the thing that gets frustrating is we have you know, guys that know it and they're there, and it's something to distract them a little bit sometimes. We can't be distracted. We can't uh, make impulse moves and go bite at something. We have to do just 11 guys doing their job. That's what great defense is made of. And when you get that, it's, uh, it's fun to watch. It looked like they were hitting you on some of the same slant patterns a few times in a row. Um, how hard as a defensive coach or just coach in general to make in-game adjustments? Because it seems like it's there's a lot of process there of understanding new things you have to do. And I mean, how difficult is it to get to not only knowing what the change needs to be, but getting it across what needs to be done in any situation? Um, we've done it for a while, and we work with people that have done it for a while, you know, it's, it's what we do to make adjustments. Just because you make an adjustment doesn't mean it's done, you so you have to get it. Coach them to get it better. And it's not always an in-game adjustment. Like this call, call X, takes away this, but it's a little more fun than Call Y takes away the thing that you're vulnerable on, but it's every other thing that you're going to And what, what you do is you try to bounce around and call the call that takes away the problem. You have to, there's a lot of points to it. You have to call it the right time, then when you call it, you have to execute it, and then if you're executing from there, then the last part you have to make it. So there's a lot of parts that go into it. We've been Sometimes getting one part of it right, not getting the other part. And sometimes getting the other part right. So it's been hit and miss. And when we've done it well, we've done it really well. Sorry, a couple more questions, folks. Matt, the momentum booster. Are you seeing him turn a little bit of a corner at this point in safety? Um, it can be. Yeah. I mean, he's he's a good player. So hopefully, when I mean, you make plays uh, like that, it gives you more confidence. And every one of us has been young and inexperienced, and all of a sudden you make a play and it makes you feel. Uh, I can do this. Yeah. So yeah, that's that, that sure is the hope. Does he stay number one? Does he stay number one at that spot going into the, into this game? I mean, and how much are you looking at Sean Wade, for example, uh, as, as time progresses here in that spot? Oh, we're looking at everybody. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, he, he lined up more the ones this week. And, you know, again, we evaluate that as we go, as we did during the game. You know, um, there's not any strongholds on anything. You know, you just. You know, play who you think gives you the best chance to win. That'll always be the case. Yeah. How would you how would you rate Jeff Brom as just a schemer? I mean, you know, like you're talking me talking about well, you're not really sure what's coming from one play to the next, etc. But where does he rate on your scale? Excellent. Yeah, yeah I've uh, I've coached against him for a lot of years at different places. And uh, he's an excellent excellent coach. His brother's an excellent coach. They're, they're a football family and uh, really uh, knows them understands the game. And Greg, Greg, you, you guys yeah. You talked about the linebackers being used mostly to, to stop the run ups and just their focus. Is that their primary job against a team like Purdue, too? Well, I, I said when we've asked them to do it, right. they would do that. There's other times where the linebacker is asked to play more in pass coverage. So I, I don't want to make it where you know, they're always just committed right. to the run. But by nature, that position is, is a run-stopping position that reacts to the pass. So I, you know, I, I, I think that they've played consistent football as a as a position group. Uh, you know, we got hurt a little bit with injuries, as you know, with with Malik, but uh, he should be back. So that's that's a good thing. That was great. When you a guy like Justin Kelly who went through a ton of injuries and had some uncertainty about what he was going to be able to do during his college career, and not only to return this year healthy, but to make the play he did at the end of the game, Minnesota. What, what have you seen from him? And, and how big of a lift is that to a guy who's been working really hard just to be healthy enough to play? Well, J Justin's a joy to coach. I mean, he is a uh, he's a great athlete. He's a great kid. I'm not a kid anymore. He's a young man. But I uh, really enjoyed being around him. So I was happy to, I was happy that he played. You know, he played a little the week before. Um, and then he, obviously, by necessity, played more this week. But I'm, I'm happy for him because he's, you know, not only did he do well on defense, he's one of our best special teams performers. So he's a great former five-star prospect that was one of the biggest gets in that recruiting class. 
when a guy is injured the way that he was, what is this scene like? I mean, if he's healthy, is he, is he, is he a potential game changer again? Or what do you see out of him? Well, you know, he's only been healthy for a year, right? so he's putting a whole year under his belt right now. So hopefully that can remain and continue to grow. As coaches, you know, at least my belief is practice is everything. When you get the chance to practice, that's where you improve. You play the most you can play in college football is 15 games. Yet we get to practice 100, 100 times. So the more he gets to do that, the better he's going to get. And, and I'm excited for him. Greg Malik Great. and Jonathan right are back. I'm assuming BB's back as well. How much of a lift do you think those guys can give? How they look? Well, today, you know, they practice today and. Uh, yeah, it's always when you get your starters back, it's always a big lift. So hopefully everyone can be healthy come Saturday night. Did you one thing about the